Hey guys, we're back with the next installment of the RatRig VCore 3.1 Do-It-Yourself 3D Printer Build Series. In this video, we're going to finish the mechanical assembly, and along the way, I'll explain what inspired me to take on this project and talk about some of the cool features of this printer. Starting on day four, we are done with step six out of 12-ish. I'm hoping that the one we did yesterday that we finished was the most complex with the Core XY belt routing. We're done with the Z-axis assemblies, all the linear rails, including the X-axis itself and the Y-axis, which moves a little bit. I can't move it too far because the belts aren't set up yet. Next is the bed arm assembly. So these are the three, three arms that are gonna hold the bed. They're gonna move up and down with a lead screw. That's next. So let's get to it. inspirations for building the rat rig was both my printers were broken like totally hosed I couldn't print anything I wanted to get a new printer I was convinced that I should do the DIY thing but while I was waiting for it in that time I've upgraded the printers I've, I've fixed all of them and this is the result of my make heavily modified maker gear m2 and of course the print is like perfect and it's making me say well wait why do I even need a new printer that thing is working great um, the quality on this is just awesome. I'm like super happy with this, especially because this is ASA, which is like ABS and has a huge tendency to warp. And it is like perfect. Everything about it is awesome. It's actually one of my inspirations for thinking that when I'm done with the stock build of this printer, I might, I might add a second extruder or something just to give it some value over the other printers. Step seven done. Lead screws are all installed. Yes. All right, on to step eight. Let's do it. Ah, look at this. Straight cast aluminum. This is heavy. Doesn't look totally flat. I don't know. But either way, uh, people in the rat rig community spend a lot of time trying to get perfection in the flatness of the bed. That's part of the reason why they're not fixed to the Z-axis. There's little balls that you'll see in a minute that I'm gonna attach uh, that are free to move kind of back and forth. The justification for that is that when this heats up, it expands and if they're fixed to the Z mounts, the Z axis uh, arms, then it's either going to flex the arms, it's going to flex the frame, or this is going to bow upwards and change the flatness. Um, that's a real thing. It, it really happens. I'm not convinced it matters that much because most of the reason I want a flat bed is actually for first layer adhesion. But when you have the auto bed leveling sensor, it will actually, before every print, probe the height and it can calculate the surface. And then when it does that first layer, it's going to move the print head and the Z uh, to match. You know, the reason why people want it flat though is so the print itself is flat. But typically we're talking about 0.2 millimeters difference between here and here. So if I'm printing a part that big, it, this side might be 0.2 millimeters higher, 0.4 millimeters higher. Uh, I'm not convinced that's a problem. A lot of my prints, like with the advanced materials, are warping anyway, so they're gonna have more distortion than that.
Yes! And now onto the final step of the mechanical assembly, Eva. You might remember from my part one video, I said I had a lot of trouble with Eva. Oh yeah, and this son of a The entire EVA hot end assembly? Yeah, we'll get to him later. We'll get to him. But it's actually a really cool design and it should have been an equally cool experience, but I had some crazy issues with it that nearly broke my spirit. Because of that, I actually made a completely separate video about print heads, fasteners, and all the circumstances that led to this horrific experience with Eva. Even though it was pretty specific to my situation, I recommend you pause this video and go and check that one out for its educational value, and especially to understand what the heck is going on in this video. Or don't, and just wonder why there's so much swearing and mumbling about this thing called captive nuts. Could be more fun that way. Make a drinking game out of it. But here's the gist. Eva is a 3D printer print head design, and like all other parts of this printer, it was designed to be printed on a consumer 3D printer. However, I had just gotten access to my dream 3D printer called the Fuse One at a local community college fab lab, and I paid to print the parts off on that. However, it's an industrial printer, and I didn't realize the parts needed to be scaled differently. The end result was spending eight to 10 hours trying to get this part together when it really should have taken only two to three hours. That explains all the frustration and swearing, but luckily I did eventually get it together, and I'm glad to be over with that phase of my life. Let's take a look. having a heck of a time with these parts. The captive nut design, it's not working with these parts. I think it's because I printed these at full size and the Fuse 1 prints, it already does shrinkage compensation, whereas the parts listed on the rat rig are expecting a shrinkage factor because you're usually printing on a regular FDM printer. must not be lined up quite right. I don't know what's going on. I'm in decision paralysis on the wiring, so I'm gonna procrastinate by upgrading this guy. Let's give him some new clothes. I'm gonna upgrade this piece, this piece, these little pieces, and this probe mount with the blue and 5015 fan. So, let's do it. Of course, a lot of these pieces were a royal pain to get on the first time, and they may be a royal pain to put back together. I really hope none of those captured nuts fall out. 
Kind of a cool part, but I don't like the fan design. I've always liked these fans better for part cooling. They're impeller designs. They suck in air through here and blow it out there. Oh no. No, there's nothing to capture them. Oh, brutal. The only way to do this is to put the captured nuts in this piece, which requires taking this piece off, which requires untensioning the belts. Oh, that's frustrating. I hate captured nuts. Oh man, I'd have to remove so much. Well, retensioning the belts isn't the worst thing. There's the belt design. This thing has a lock nut here and a hole for an M5 there that goes in here and the bolt goes in from the other side. As you screw it in, pulls this in, which is what tensions it. <sighs> this is terrible. that broke off a little wing <sighs> captive nut back here fell out and then while I was trying to fix it I broke something and I don't know what's going on okay we're, we're okay the part that broke off was this little wing right here that could have been worse. The lack of that wing may reduce my hot end cooling by 2%. I guess I could try to super glue it. Disaster. I have to take everything apart. I think I don't have to take everything apart. I, those captive nuts that are giving me problems. I originally thought they were like on one of the other pieces and I'd have to take everything apart, but luckily I don't think that's the case. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull them through and this time I want them to have super glue. Please, please, please work. Yes, they all grabbed it. All right, I think we did it. There we go. All right, with everything back on, I can retighten the belts and then we're finally, finally back to where we started three hours ago. So this is after the completion of everything except for the wiring and the enclosure. I'm done. I think it was 25 hours to get to this point and most of it, was this son of a Oh, this thing. One of the cool things about the rat rig design you'll see is that it's got this little circuit board right on top. It kind of looks like a, a, a fro on the rat rig's head. This is an accelerometer. When this thing is moving fast and it's flying around over this space, uh, it can cause vibrations and those vibrations can transfer into poor print quality. So what this does is you can run a calibration routine where it'll jiggle the motor uh, in the X direction and the Y direction at, at all the different like frequencies from like one to 500 Hertz, I think, and it will measure resonance. And if certain frequencies are causing the machine to shake, then when you send a print to it that has motions that trigger those frequencies, it'll actually adjust the speed of the machine to avoid it.
So that's a very cool feature of this machine. It could be retrofitted on other machines, but it's kind of neat that it's like permanently on here, which means that every time I change something with the machine, especially like if you change the belt tension, that can change the resonant frequencies and then you can just run the routine again. Three point bed leveling, one, two, three. That can completely tilt the bed to uh, get it totally flat. You can see here that it's not even really that flat, but I can move one of the motors and you can see now it's getting less flat. And something else you'll see here is this. The bed is not fixed at any of these corners. They just have these little balls which run across two dowel pins so they can slide back and forth freely. And to avoid them getting bumped too easily, there's a magnet in there that kind of like holds it down. And when the bed heats up, then the bed can actually expand outwards. The balls, these little bearings will slide out and the bed will remain flat. At least that's the theory. And one of the biggest complexities of this machine is the Core XY design, which is the new thing in 3D printing. In a Cartesian printer, each belt, one belt will be for the X-axis and one belt will be for the Y-axis. But in a, in a Core XY, if I grab this belt and move it, you'll see that this actually moves diagonally. And if I move this one, it'll move diagonally in the opposite dimension. Uh, one of the coolest reasons for it in addition to just making this whole fixture lighter because you don't have a motor on it, these motors can be completely fixed on the frame. So there's, so instead of having an X motor and a Y motor, this is just the top belt motor and the lower belt motor. Those motors are now fixed, fixed outside the enclosure. They won't be moving around, which should reduce wear, and they won't be getting the heat from inside the chamber, so they'll perform better. One of the downsides of this is you have to have crazy long belts. The top belt starts from the front left side of the print head and wraps all the way around the machine connecting to the back right side. And then the lower belt starts from the bottom right and wraps all the way around the machine to get to the back left. So there it is. Obviously I have quite a bit of work left to do. I haven't done any of the wiring. So that's it for the entire mechanical assembly. In the next and final video, I'm going to go over the wiring, the enclosure, and I'll give you a tour of the custom Clipper firmware that RatRig developed specifically for their printers called RatOS. I had never used Clipper before, and it's actually a really cool interface for managing your printer. And much like the Core XY motion system, it's something you're not really going to see on any pre-built consumer printers. You kind of have to build your own printer or modify an existing one if you want to use Clipper. If you want to see more about this build before the next video, including the sub 10 minute benchy that I just pulled off with this printer, then go check out my Instagram profile. It's just alan.reiner. I also occasionally post snapshots to Instagram of other projects I'm working on. If you want to get a sneak peek of things I'm going to cover in future videos. And if you're enjoying this content, please follow me on Instagram. Give me a like and subscribe on this video. It really helps me out and encourages the algorithm to promote my video to a wider audience, which gets me more views and helps me continue doing this thing that I'm doing. Thanks for watching.